Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Youngstown Phantoms forward, William Whitelaw. William, welcome to the podcast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I guess just, uh, yeah, just start off things here. How have you been doing recently? Uh, how has the team been doing? How's your, how do you like your game uh, so far this season? Yeah, our doing good. We have a young group uh, taking us a little bit to get going, but I think, uh, we're starting to hit the stride at the right time here, coming down the back half of the season. So I think we should uh, be ready to go after break and have a strong uh, back half of the season and really uh, have a good year. Right after the break, you guys are up against the Dubuque uh, Fighting Saints there. What's the game plan going into that game? Oh, uh, yeah, obviously we have a couple of days off. So just like uh, when we get back, get a, get a good couple of practices in us, like one or two, and then just come get, uh, get to Dubuque, Iowa, and just come there ready to work. Obviously, it's not going to be – our best possible game because we haven't been together for a couple days and we're on break. But I feel like that our mindset going in just me to outwork them and uh, do do everything we can to win. And I think we'll we'll be successful if we do that. You guys played them back in November. Do you expect to see something different, or are you expecting to see something similar when you play them again? Yeah, obviously the league's changing nonstop, like uh, power plays, penalty kills, and stuff like that. So I think like stuff like those will change, like how we're going to match up against the other team or. If they've changed anything, I think that'll be the only major change. But I think the intensity will still be there. It was, they were two very intense games, and it, it was good. Uh, getting into a bit of your story, uh, who is your biggest influence to get into hockey? Uh, probably my dad. Uh, growing up, he he couldn't afford to play hockey, so he wanted to give me the opportunity to be able to play. So I think that that was my biggest influence growing up, and he did everything possible to make me uh, the best player I can be. So I think he's been my biggest influence. Was there a player growing up who you wanted to model your game after? I mean, growing up, uh, especially like in my era growing up, I think that Patrick Kane's always everyone's kind of guy to watch. Like him winning all those Stanley Cups growing up and watching him at the TV and watching him uh, play is obviously uh, something to watch for. So not necessarily modeling my game after 100%, but I like to take things that he does and implement them into my game. Have you seen Patrick Kane play? Yeah, I have. Uh, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Dude, he has the silkiest mitts I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, he, he's very calm with the puck and always makes the right play and always is aware of his surroundings and doesn't take many hits because he's very smart of what he does with the puck. He, his IQ is off the charts. Like, I, like you mentioned with the hits, I, I don't – like, I never see him get hit. It's, a, it's crazy. Yeah, that's like McDavid too, kind of. Like, he, if you watch him, like, he does, like, a lot of ridiculous stuff, but, like, he, he's always aware of his surroundings and doesn't really take the big hit that some of these other players take. And McDavid gets, I feel like McDavid gets mauled down every play. Like this guy's getting hawked, slash, held because of how fast he is. Oh yeah, he, he's he's just on a different level than everyone right now, I think. Growing up in Minnesota, were, were the Wild your favorite team or what's your NHL uh, favorite team here? Yeah, I, honestly, uh, the Wild have always been obviously one of my favorite teams. Like growing up, I went to watch the stadium series that we had in Minnesota. So that, that was a cool experience. And then, so, like, obviously, growing up watching them as a kid, like, we're in the state of hockey, so, obviously, Minnesota is, like, you always go and watch the Wild. I'm, I'm a big Capitals fan, too, because, like, I went to the game when I was younger, and it was, like, their jersey night, and I got an autograph by all the guys, so that was pretty cool, so. That is really cool. They've, they've always been close to me now after that, too, so. God damn it, man. I'm still waiting for Ovi to score his goal here. Oh, I know. Yeah, that was, that was sweet. Like I, he's he's one away from tying how or or he yeah I think one away from tying how and it's like game after game I'm waiting for him waiting for all this history and it just sucks that it's taking this long. Oh no, yeah, he he he's the best goal scorer I think to ever play the game. He he has something different than everyone else. That stadium series that the Wild uh, have played in that was that was a really fun game. I remember watching that. No, yeah, it was cool. It was it was, it was freezing outside, but it was it was a good experience to go and see that and stuff like that. You played through the Shattuck St. Mary's program. Uh, what caused you to stay there for as long as you did? Yeah, obviously, I, I honestly don't think there's anything like it there. I think it's honestly the best place that you can play hockey in your life. There's between the history in it, the the way we go about our business there. I think there's obviously like uh, there's tons of great players that come up through there, like Crosby, Taze, McKinnon, you name it. A lot of those guys have been there, and I think that. The group of kids that we had my uh, second year coming back, I think that, I mean, my fourth year coming back, I think that there there's no reason for me to leave and rush. I think that I could have went and played in the USHL, but I didn't think I was 100% ready to where I wanted to be. 
I think that just playing with uh, going under my coach, uh, Coach Ward, he, he's the one who coached like Crosby, Taze, and all of them. He, he knows the method of madness, I think. And yeah, he, uh, he needed, I needed to develop my game a little more before I was ready to take on the OSHL level. And I think he, he helped me do just that. You must have been sucking up so much information from a guy who coached Crosby, Taves, and McKinnon. Yeah, no, he had a lot of knowledge with hockey, and he's a huge hockey guy, and he's coached at every level, the NHL, World Juniors, you, you name it, and, like, he, he, he's the real deal. In the year you joined the Phantoms, uh, you scored 110 points with St. Mary's there. Uh, was that a season where, you know, everything just clicked offensively? I, f- I find, like, that's just stupid of me to ask that. No, yeah, no, I think uh, – I wouldn't say everything clicked. Like, obviously, there's tons of chances you missed, but I think that we uh, we had a good team and our, we had really good chemistry, and uh, just playing with those guys made it easy to be able to do that. Like, my teammates would give me the puck, and I'd get them the puck, and we were just a very good group of guys, and uh, we worked hard every day, so that, that really helped. How did you end up joining the Phantoms? Yeah, so uh, I got drafted uh, the year before – Oh um, my! So my third year Shattuck after that season, I got drafted by the Phantoms, and then I was debating on going there or staying at Shattuck, and then I just uh, ultimately decided that uh, my coach told me uh, to be it's better to be overripe than underdeveloped, and that's when I decided I was like, yeah, I'm not ready to go yet, and then I decided to stay. Well, it's good you had the, I guess, like the personal decision or like the awareness, I should say, uh, to make that decision to stay a year with Shaddix before making that jump to the USHL. No, yeah, no, I think uh, a lot of people do things and I think that's one thing I want to do different about my hockey career. I don't, I don't think that there's any rush to get to where you want to get to. What was the biggest difference that you noticed from playing with Shaddix to now playing with the Phantoms? Yeah, I think... Uh, the goalies are a lot better. I think that's the biggest thing uh, from U18 to the USHL is I think it's harder to score goals in this league. Like everyone's good here. Um, everyone's good at defense. Everyone knows your systems. And I think that I don't think there's a better junior league than the, the USHL. I think uh, all the kids, the way we prepare every game and the way that uh, we take care of our business is uh, there's nothing better. And it's, I think it's just uh, an all around hard league to produce. And if you look like at all the good players who have, came through the league. They haven't put up monster numbers like the other leagues have. And I think that that shows that how hard of a league it is. You had the, you had the chance to play in two playoff games with the Phantoms so far. Uh, what was that atmosphere like? No, yeah, it was good. It was a great experience uh, for me. Um, I'm a young, I was a young guy uh, coming into the league. And I think that getting that playoff experience will definitely help me for this year with our team in the playoffs too. Like obviously the outcome we wanted, but it's still good to, uh, get those two games under my belt and know what it feels like, know what it takes and uh, not come up short this year. Do you have any playoff superstitions? Oh, uh, no, I kind of, I'm kind of superstitious, but like, I don't have like, it kind of ch- doesn't change. Like when it comes to playoffs, like I like to go to the rink, uh, stick in a little bit, like watch some hockey highlights, nothing uh, too major, but I, I kind of just go about a game day routine every day. It must have been just such like, you know, like you mentioned with the getting the reps, but also just taking taking it all in like day by day, because it does change from the regular season to the playoffs. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. Uh, you you pre-scout a lot more and not kind of everything they're doing. And um, so, yeah, it's just it's just like another dimension of hockey. It's intense. It's everyone uh, amps it up because like you don't want it to be your last game. I think that's the biggest thing. Now, last year, you had the opportunity to represent USA at the U-17s. Uh, what was that moment like for you to put on the American jersey? Yeah, no, it's obviously special getting to represent your country and uh, all the people that are behind the scenes working for you, like the military people and everything. It's obviously cool to be able to go out and honor them uh, when you go and play. So you always try to make the most of it. Do you still keep in contact with the players from the U-17s? Yeah, I talked to a couple of the kids still, so that's good. Uh, you were also on the Holinka Gretzky Cup team for USA, four points in four games. Uh, but that tournament is so short. So how hard is it to build the chemistry there? Yeah, it's obviously it's really hard. It's a quick, uh, quick tournament. And some of the teams like uh, from the other countries are together a little longer than us. But I think that uh, it's no excuse. I think we obviously should have done better than we did. We had, we had a really good team on paper. And I think that we kind of underperformed a little bit. But it's still a hard tournament, like being able to build chemistry with those guys and I think they did a really good job with that too. Like I think uh, we did like a lot of small events and like games as a team to kind of get to know each other a little better. And so I think they did a good job with that. It's a little hard to build chemistry, but I think that uh, we still had a really close group of guys and I think it was good. 
what are you going to take away from that experience? Yeah, I just, uh, just going about your business the right way. I think that obviously, like, it sucks. We didn't do as good as we should, but I think that uh, we just got to do better next time. I think you know, next time I get the opportunity to wear the jersey again, hopefully, I think that uh, we'll, we'll, uh, it'll go a little better. I think that that's the goal. Now, with all the team building and team bonding that goes around on these uh, special tournaments when you're representing your country, do you have a funny story from any of those tournaments? I mean, not really. Uh, probably uh, the, the best memory that we probably had was coming back from Five Nations. We won that tournament. We were in Switzerland and we were on the bus for like at like three in the morning. And we were just blasting music in the back of the bus like the whole way home. So back well, to I there. Mean, didn't you guys win that tournament? No, yeah, we did. So that was yeah, cool. exactly. You're going to be celebrating all night long. No, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Just uh, riding back on the bus with the guys and, like, listening to music the whole way back. And then another thing is, is we did, like, a bunch of sewer tournaments with uh, our whole Inca team. Those were pretty fun, though. They got intense, and it was, it was good. Friendly competition. So are you the one controlling Ox? No, no, no. Not, not the Ox guy in the room. <laughs> uh with sewer that has to be like so what like a pregame thing every time now no oh, yeah no yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's common in every league like you see it in the nhl you see it in junior and you see it in the younger levels too like i think like that's like a huge part it's a fun game and it gets legs like, going it gets the guys i think it gets the guys a little closer too in the room one player that you had the opportunity to play with at least you know that's going to catch attention here in canada is macklin celebrini uh what do you like about his game so much yeah, obviously, like, he has a skill that you'd anyone would want to be an NHL hockey player. Like, you see all the stuff he does on the ice and in the games, but I think uh, his work ethic's the best uh, asset to his game. He he works uh, he works really hard and exceptionally hard, and every day he goes about his business like it's a game. He goes to the rink, works his, works his bag off every day, and just the way he goes about his business, like, working on and off the ice, like, in the gym and the ice, like, that's why he's able to do what he does, and that's why he's going to continue to be an unbelievable hockey player. You're on pace for 60 points this season. What do you like about your game so much? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I didn't have the best start I wanted to, but I think uh, it's good enough to start. And I think uh, this back half will really uh, work on building on that. And I think that uh, just like being offensive, like uh, making uh, high-end plays and shooting the puck, I think that's one of the biggest parts of my game is using my skating and my shot. And I think my teammates have been doing a good job of making me be successful. And I think that... Uh, It'll only get better as we uh, come closer to the group and keep working hard. Looking into the future, you're committed to Wisconsin. What kind of factored into that decision? Yeah, obviously, I think I committed uh, two years ago, and they were uh, they had Caulfield on the team at the time in Turcon. I think that smaller player, and uh, I think the the head coach, Coach Granado, he's uh play he's played in every level. He's played in the NHL. He's coached in the NHL, and I think that. Uh, he, the way and like uh, the other players in Wisconsin, I think he's going to be the, the coach that uh, is going to help me develop me into an NHL hockey player. And that's one of the main reasons why I chose Wisconsin. Like, obviously, the facilities are great. The campus is great. But at the end of the day, I want to go to the NHL. And I think that he, uh, he's the coach and he's the person I trust uh, that's going to do that for me. Well, let's talk about the height there, because you're kind of one of the shorter players on the team. Uh, we look at Alex Dabrinka and Cole Caulfield, like you mentioned, uh, who a lot of the time get criticized because of their height. How do you make sure that's not a disadvantage for you? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, my shadow coach told me, he goes, uh, the one thing that you're going to get questioned a lot in your hockey career is your height. And he goes, height has nothing to do with how good you are. He goes, if you're good enough, you'll make it. He goes, that's just an like, uh those guys that you just mentioned prove that all the time. Like Alex Rinkett's one of the better guys in the league. And uh, Cole Caulfield, obviously, he's he's, gonna, he's a young star. He's going to be a good hockey player. And, and like Braden Point's obviously a smaller guy too. And I think those guys are just like showing that like if you're good enough to make it, you're going to make it. It doesn't matter how tall you are. I think nowadays in the league, like even Martian, like he gets a lot of crap, but I still think he's a good player. And I think that uh, the way those players play, I think uh, – they show that small guys uh, can do just as much as the big guys in the league. And I think that's important. That definitely helps me out in the long run. Now, one question that I have about Wisconsin is have you, have you been keeping up with how they've done this season? Oh yeah. I've, I've uh, watched a couple games and looked at, I think. Uh, yeah. What do you hope to uh, major in? Uh, I'm still deciding on that yet. I don't, I don't know completely yet what I want to do, but probably something in the, the business area. So. 
Uh, talking about this summer's draft, yeah, you're a draft prospect. Uh, has this season helped you out in that kind of aspect? Yeah, I think uh, everything's kind of helped me out building up to this. Like last year, my year at Shattuck, and uh, uh, and I think uh, the Holinka Gutsy Cup helped a little bit and kind of just building up into this season. I think that, uh, yeah, I think the year's helped uh, a bit. I think that uh, there's still room for improvement for me for sure. But I still think that uh, I'm in a good spot of uh, where I've started out so far and I'm only going to build on it towards the end of the year. How would you classify your game? Like, would you say you're more of a playmaker, sniper? What would you classify your game as? Yeah, I think I'm an electrifying uh, shooter. I like to make uh, quick, uh, quick, aggressive plays in the defense and, like, shoot the puck and find areas to shoot. And uh, I like to shoot from everywhere, and I like to put the puck in the net, and I think that's my biggest asset is being able to score. I think I have underrated playmaking. Like, I can make a lot of high-end plays, too, which I'm going to continue to show the second half of the year, but uh, I'm primarily a shooter and a scorer, so. Lots of players that, you know, with have added pressure with their draft uh, pros, with their draft season. Uh, how do you make sure that the pressure doesn't get to you? Yeah, um, honestly, just taking everything day by day. And I talked to, like, this mental skills coach about it a little bit a couple of weeks ago, and he was just like, just like how to like take care of your business, like uh, just be in the moment, just live uh, everything you can to the fullest and like just go to the rink, be happy and uh, put the draft on the shelf. And then just uh, when it comes about, it comes about, but he goes, there's no added pressure from that. He goes, just go out there and play the game you played when you were seven years old. So yeah, just leave it out there on the ice. Yeah, I know. So I think it's just like, and my coaches have done a good job about that of being uh, just like helping me out with stuff like that. So it's, it's been good. It's been good so far. My last question to you is, do you have any advice for uh, aspiring hockey players? Yeah, I just never give up. Obviously, it's not easy at first. Nothing's easy in in this world. I think that just go to the rink, uh, do what makes you happy. And if hockey makes you happy, like I think like if you keep working hard every day, I think that you'll be happy with your end result. So I think just uh, sticking with it is the biggest thing. Well, I'd like to thank again, William Whitelaw for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, William. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.